my own kind of thing. Like, you say, you know, something power wise, and then you check it up and what it says. It says it has a All right. So, happy Friday. Um, it is, as you can tell in my family, take your daughters to school day, or another way of putting it, uh, your wife has a meeting that conflicts day. <laughs> uh, my youngest daughter did want you to know that uh, if you didn't give me a Valentine's Day, there's hatred in your heart, uh, a Valentine's Day card. So years from now, when you're picking up the pieces from your broken marriage at a psychiatrist, remember that hatred started here today. <laughs> but for those of you that gave me a nice Valentine, all right, you, you have my full support. It, it's the, your spouse's fault when the marriage breaks up. Okay. Um, so what I, uh, because of this planned trip, I had pulled my drawing tablet out of my bag and like this is the first day I wanted to use it so that's kind of a drag but it's all right I don't need to do a huge amount of drawing uh, what I'm going to do for the bulk of the period if not the entire period is this will do crop let me Uh, this is what I want to do. I want to do something like that. I just want to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, I wanted to, to go through the process for actually, so assignment four, which was to, in C++, do 16 hexes together. That assignment is past us now, and I wanted to actually uh, for you walk through the process of creating uh, an entire page of grids and I'm doing this without a net haven't haven't tried it before in front of a live audience so we'll see how this goes uh, so I wanted to give you an idea of, of what's I kind of do a think aloud where I'm telling you what's going on in my mind in the process I'm using so you can see the problem solving process I'm, I'm going through to do this. Also, I'm going to, we haven't formally introduced functions. Uh, as I mentioned in the, the announcement, I'll probably be gone Monday and Tuesday, in which case Andrea, and I will be gone Monday or Tuesday, barring something like weather again. Uh, and so Andreas and uh, Austin, I don't know how they're dividing up the work, but one or both of them will be in here to formally introduce functions. So even though I haven't formally introduced them, I kind of skirted around the edges and enough that I think I can use simple functions to show some of their advantages in solving this problem. So using that as a, a launching point, I'm going to start with my red pen here. And I think I want that the the whole oh what a pain this is going to be the whole thing begins with the your pointer at the dot facing the direction of the arrow okay so I know right off the bat that if I move forward that I'm going to draw a horizontal line and I can mark that as that particular hexagon now the reason I'm taking this particular hexagon is I'm figuring that I'm gonna, um, I just wanna start here drawing, drawing the hexes. And the strategy that I'm thinking about is first to be able to draw a hex, and I actually provided that code, and that's pretty straightforward. That's just a for loop to go straight, turn right, go straight, turn right, and you do that six times, and you end up, when you finish looping six times, with that last go straight, turn right, I actually end up at this exact same point facing the exact same direction. Okay. So given that I can draw this hex, I'm thinking what I want to do then is maybe draw this hex and then this hex and then this hex. So if I can draw one hex, if I can get myself down to the next starting point, uh, then I can put that whole thing in a loop and I can draw as many hexes uh, straight down as I want. So I'm thinking of that as a first step. So what I'll do is I will come back here, and I had failed to grab 
this code, so let me do that now. Hang on, let me Wasn't quite how I was planning to do that, but it takes me to the same destination. Okay, so now I can, from my downloads directory, I can move everything that starts with the word hexagon, and from the downloads directory, move everything that begins, well, assignment4.cpp, and I can move all of that stuff into my current directory, and there we go. Okay. So assignment4.cpp, uh, I want to make sure that everything's working correctly before I begin my own modifications, so I will do that. Uh, I guess I'll put it in an output file called, I'm going to call it uh, paper. Or how about make paper, make paper. And it compiles without error, I can run it, that's going to spit all that Postscript to the screen. Instead, I want to redirect that to a file. So I'll just go with the tradition and call it output.ps. And I should be able to open that up. And there it is. And there's my one hex. Okay. So I'll close that, come back here. Now let's begin doing this. So looking back at my drawing here. That is drawing this hex, and it's it's my the point where I'm at is exactly where I started. So in order for me to draw this hex exactly the same way, where I need to be is I need to be right here facing this direction, yes? And if I'm right there facing this direction, I can run this exact same code all over again, and I should get this second hex down here. So uh, the problem becomes how to get from this point down to this point. Now, in order, what I'm going to do is I'm immediately going to take advantage of functions. And again, I acknowledge I haven't done a real big formal introduction of functions. I think I've, I've skirted around the edges enough that... Um, I can go ahead and create a rudimentary function. So this is a function that doesn't return anything. I'm not interested in it giving me a float back or anything like that. I'm just interested in it doing something. And what I want it to do is I want it to draw this hex that I have on lines 11 through 15. So I'm going to say colon 11 through 15. I want to delete those lines. Those lines go into a buffer. And then I can type P to put out the contents of that buffer. And there we go. So now what I can do is I can just simply say draw hex. I can invoke this function, call this function, and on line 16 as the first thing that main does, and it should jump up here to line 4 and run all this code, and when it's done, it comes down to line 17. Okay? Yes? Do you have Yeah, so again, this is just describing what this particular function returns. You can write a million functions. Every one of them can return nothing, meaning return void. The only distinction is that the names of the functions would have to be different. And we're going to actually take advantage of some of that. So I, again, I've just made this minor change following the principle that I've advocated. Uh, I'm going to test this thing frequently. Um, now, I should see an error if I compile this, which should make the point that, that it is valuable to test this thing frequently. And indeed, I've got an error here. And it's saying use of undeclared identifier. What this means is the compiler has never heard of this before. What are you talking about? Which is kind of weird because it was working a minute ago. But if I look at my code, you can see that my include statement, this file contains all the information for the compiler telling what the different hexagon kinds of commands I might give, the move forward, the move backward, and so forth. So I simply need to move that up above the point where I'm using the hexagon functions, meaning those two. Once I do that, this thing should compile just fine. And it does. I can rerun it. 
I can open it up again, and there it is. Okay, so I'm back where I started. The only difference is I've got this nicely packaged into a function now so that I can reuse it. So getting back to our, our drawing, I need to get to this point. Now, there are a couple ways of doing it. I can either go here, 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 and uh, once I do that, I would be facing this way. If I did uh, move forward, turn right, move forward, turn right, move forward, turn right, move forward. If I didn't do that last turn right, I'd be facing the opposite way I need to face. If I did that final turn right, I'd be facing up here. Or I can immediately turn myself around and move forward, turn left, move forward, turn left. And I think I like that. I don't have to traverse so much distance to do that. So with a little trial and error, um, this is going to be 120 degrees that I have to turn here. 60 degrees is just going to be this direction. So 60 degrees would be right here. I don't want to go right there. I need to go another 60 degrees to be pointing down this way. So let me go ahead and try that. I draw a hex and then I want to turn to the right, right by 120 degrees. And then I want to move forward. So that's going to put me, what color do I have here? That should, if it's working correctly, should put me here. Then I want to turn left 60 degrees. Turn left by 60 degrees. And then another move forward should put me right here. So I'll copy and paste that. Now at this point in time, I'm facing this way. So I need to do one more turn left 60 degrees to get facing the same way as this red arrow here. So I'll just copy and paste that. That should get me to where this red arrow is. And once I've done that, I should just be able to call my draw hex function again. So let me copy and paste this line. I compile it, I run it, I take a look, and there we go. Okay. So now that would put me, um, well, it puts me right where I left off, so I'd be right here. Now I need to get down to here. I need to do the exact same movements that I did the first time, right? So that means I have to do all these again. Now I could simply do all those lines again. Let me separate these so you can see it. Right, and then I would begin in yet another iteration. But we immediately see a pattern. So someone suggested a loop. Yeah, I think a loop is a nice idea. Also, I want to. I think I this set of groupings is something that I'm using over and over again, just like the draw hex is something that I'm using over and over again. So why don't I put those in a function? Let's call that function what I'm doing, which is move down one. How about that? Have move down one hex. So I'll create a function void move down one hex. And inside of that function, I'm going to put lines, I have to do some cleanup, but at the moment it's going to be lines 21 through 25. 21 through 25, I'll delete those lines. I'll come up here and type P to put. Now, I can right here say move down one hex. And then I... So let me, I don't want to be doing a bunch of loops and stuff until I confirm that the code as I have written so far works, right? So this should, if this is working, it should give me three hexes. Whoops. There we go. Draw, move, draw, move, draw, move. Compile it, run it, close that, open it. And I do indeed have three hexes. So the algorithm is working so far. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how many down I have to go to 
fill up a piece of paper. A uh, little bit of experimenting. I frankly don't actually know how many. I know that uh, the default for moving forward is a quarter of an inch. So I know that this distance is a quarter of an inch. This is going to be somewhat more than a quarter of an inch, but it'll be less than half an inch. So somewhere between a quarter and a half inch. If I act conservatively and say a half inch, there's 11 inches on the vertical side of a piece of paper. That'd be 22 hexes. So that's a good guess as a start. And then I would use a loop. And so I would create, I would say start at zero as long as it's less than that. I want to do those two lines of code. We can try it. Oops. Okay. Maybe I could get another hex in there. Uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, that's the interesting thing is that I don't have to tune it at this point because um, when all said and done, when I'm ready to finish up this thing, all I have to do is come back and play with this number right here to get it exactly right. Yeah, no need to do that now. That's the easiest thing to do. Trial and error. All right, so if I draw a bunch of hexes, then coming back to my, my picture here, when I'm done, I will have just drawn, I'm going to, um, yeah, I'll do this one. I will have just drawn this one, and you all probably can't see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my paper in half right about there. Here, I can do that more ninja-like. There we go. Yes? If we move, move it over to the next column, can we then just repeat what we did? Right, so we'll talk about... We'll talk about moving it over and repeating. Okay, that's our next step. Uh, so, so, so that everyone can see it, I'll call that green line the bottom of my piece of paper. And what I've just done is I've just drawn this hex here. And it is going to be the exact same pattern as we see with every hex. When I'm done drawing a hex, I'm always in the upper left-hand corner facing to the right. Okay, nothing's changed with any of that. So I am currently at, at this position right here, and I'm facing this way. Yes? I thought you went draw, move, draw, move, draw, move. Oh, I did do, yes, you're exactly right. I did draw, move. So let me confirm that. Yes, so you're exactly right. Move down one hex. So I'm not there, so I'll cleverly come back here and say I never did that. Uh, I would be at the very bottom. I'd be right here, ready to draw that hex that is down here, off the edge of the paper. Okay, so now the question is um, how to draw the next column because the next column is a little bit odd because it's off it's a little bit higher up now one strategy is I can do a little zigzag and I can get all the way to the top of the page right here and then I could repeat the process right but we can be a little bit more efficient with it in that um, let's say that I want to get to this position in green where I am here facing this way which obviously isn't too difficult to move for me to get to. If I get there, is it possible for me to draw this hex above me? Yes. No. And what would be a combinate? What moves would be combined to draw this hex above at me? Six, 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 three, left, Sixty degree left turns. Move forward, turn left. Move forward, turn left. Move forward, turn left. Once I'm done drawing this hex, then I should be right where I started on the blue. There are other ways. I'm, I'm just, yes, go. So again, I'm not giving you the only solution to this. There are as many solutions as there are atoms in the universe to this problem. Okay, I'm just picking one. So my next is to, uh, what would I call that? Maybe move up to next column, something like that. All right, so... Um, well, let me get to calling it names in a minute. 
I have to move forward, turn left, move forward, turn right to get from the red arrow to the blue arrow. So let me do that. So I need to move forward, turn left by 60, uh, copy and paste here, move forward, turn right by 60. Hmm? What? Yeah. Any any time you do move forward, it's step, it's going to draw a line, and so that I spelled it wrong. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you're right. I apologize for being dense. You're exactly right. I did misspell it. I obviously spelled it correctly just then, and some jerk who wrote the library misspelled it when they made the library. Um, oh, there's one more. No, there isn't. No, okay. Uh, all right. There we go. Okay, if all is working well, I should be at this point in time. Uh, you can do a strange test before I even get to drawing the hex. Let me just draw. Uh, let me just draw a big line that's like three inches long, and let's see that it is in the place we're expecting. Right? Remember that this measurement's in inches, and what's assumed here is quarter-inch drawings. So. This isn't what we want in the final product, but this is kind of the nice kind of thing you do to test. What it does is it tells you exactly where you are and exactly which way you're facing. So I compile it, I run it, I close it, I open it, and that is exactly where I want to be. Okay, so now I just need to draw a hex right here in the other direction. Uh, come back to my drawing. So again, it's a move forward, turn left by 60 degrees. So I would again do another loop. I would say uh, get rid of that. I'm not going to move forward by three inches anymore. I move forward. I turn left by 60 degrees and we want this in a loop and we want to do it six times and we close, whoops, cancel, close, open, bingo, exactly where we want it. All right. So now let's clean up, let's pause a little bit to clean up our code. Uh, these four lines here, that is the process of me moving up to the next column. So that's exactly what I want to call it. I'm going to create a function up here. I'll call that void move up to next column, I guess. And then I will come down here. I'll say lines 35 through 38 I want to delete. And I will put them right in there. And now here I will say move up to next column. And now I realize that I've got a bit of a naming oddity. I've just simply called this draw hex, and this is the exact same thing, except this is left and right. So I, I want to give this a more informative name, well, since the difference is whether we're drawing the hex below our current point or above our current point. Why don't we call our initial one, uh, what I'll draw hex down. So what I can do is I can look for the term draw hex. And wherever I see that, I can add the word down. Draw hex down, draw hex down. I just have it in the two spots. And then I'm going to create another function called draw hex up. And I'll make it nice and cozy next to this one. Void. Draw hex up. And I would do lines 46 through 50. I'm going to delete them. Come up here, I'll paste them right in there, 
And now I will go draw hex up. And now I do a sanity check. All I've done is cleaned up code a little bit, organized it a bit differently. So I should at this point make sure that everything is working the way it was and that I haven't introduced any bugs. And it, that is indeed the case. I haven't introduced any bugs. So now uh, we are, let's go to our drawing. So after I do that, I've drawn this hex here and I'm exactly where this blue arrow is. However, to draw the next hex above it, I need to be right here. Yes? So what are the commands that get me from the blue, being the blue arrow to being the red arrow? I turn left by 120 degrees, move forward, turn right by 60, move forward, turn right by 60, and I will be exactly right there. So I come back here, turn left by 120, move forward, turn right by 60, copy paste, turn right by 60, now I've lost track of where I am, 120, move forward, right by 60, move forward, right by 60. So there should be two right by 60s, and there are. And then to make sure that I'm drawing where I think I need to draw, let's try dropping another hex out there to see if it indeed appears right above that first one in the second column. Compile it, run it, and close, open. Let me do that. I think I should be doing that. So there we go. So now I can go ahead and do the exact same thing I did before, which is to create a loop and get all the way back up to the top. So this, uh, let's go ahead and make more functions. This whole bit here is, what did we call the other, whoops. What did we call the other one? Move down one hex. So we need to move up one hex. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm actually going to call that function here before I lose track of where I have all this stuff. Move up one hex. So that's where the function will be. Now I'm going to take lines 52 through 56. 56. And I'm going to delete them. Now I'll come up here and I'll write a move up. I'll put it right after this one. So I'm going to put those lines here and I'll just put a little function around it. Void, move up one hex, and then we just surround this whole thing in curly braces. So now we have uh, we're drawing down a hex, drawing a hex down, moving down 22 times, then we're going to move up to the next column. And then here, this is now becoming code that we're ultimately going to want to repeat. Since I put this in a function, I want to do more testing, make sure I haven't screwed anything up. Close, open, and everything's still working good. So now let's go ahead and create a loop. So let's say for int, since I have i there, I'm going to choose a different variable. Zero j is less than 22, plus plus j, and then I'll have a couple curly braces, and in there I want to do those two lines 22 times. And this is so far, now, now you should start to be seeing the advantages of having functions because you can look at this in main. I've got the entire main function on the screen right now, and you can look at it and read it and have some understanding of how my algorithm is working. Okay, for 22, what I'm gonna do is 20, and this is the advantage to a for loop, is one of the, so we have different kinds of loops, do while, while, and for loops. 
The do while and while are well suited for indeterminate algorithms, meaning you aren't exactly sure how many times you need to iterate. You want to iterate as long as the user is saying yes or until they choose the right number. And we're, that, those are 111 problems, right? They get to be really vague and ambiguous, and you kind of got to parse through the logic to understand how things are looping in, in harder programs. One of the invariants for all three loop types, however, is you have to, you generally have to create some sort of variable and set it to an initial value. You need to stop when you reach a certain condition, and you need to change that variable so that eventually the loop ends. If you know how many times you need to loop, the for loop is wonderful because I can at a glance, I can just glance at line 51 and I immediately know, aha, I'm going to do something 22 times. That's all I, I no longer think about, uh, let's see, I'm creating a variable called i, I'm initializing that to zero, and then as long as it's less than 22, I'm going to keep doing these things, and then and what am I doing at the end of the loop? Oh, I'm adding one to i. You do these enough, the for loop becomes wonderful for just glancing at it and say, okay, I got to do something 22 times. What do you have to do 22 times? Draw a hex down and move down. Then you're going to move up to the next column, and then 22 times you're going to draw a hex up and move up one. Okay? So it, our algorithm uh, is staying fairly readable. Uh, we need to test it. Compile, run it, let's close that, let's open again, and there we go. So now when this ends, let me, let's go back to our drawing here. It's drawing up, 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 so it draws this hex right here. It ends here, but then there is the last, where's my code? There's the last move up one hex. So it is similar to what we had when we were going down. We end up being right here. Now we have a pattern, because you'll note that these two columns right here, whoops, it's off the paper, are exactly the same as these two columns right here, and it's exactly the same as these two columns right here. So basically, now that I have two columns written, I can, I can just simply repeat drawing of two columns. All I have to do is make sure I shift over, All right? Because the first column is down, the second one is up, this one is down, next one is up, this one's down, next one is up. You see the pattern? Yes? Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're going to eventually get this whole thing looping. All right. So what I need to do, if I want to repeat this entire process that I've got in these first two columns, I need to get my cursor to the same starting point that I was when I began the whole thing. When I began the whole thing, I was right here. That means if I want to do it all over again, I have to make sure that I am right here facing this way. And then I can begin uh, going, drawing the hexes down. Yeah? All right. So if I'm here, I have to go forward, right, forward, left. Yes? All right. Let's try that. Move forward. Turn right by 60. Move forward. Turn left by 60, and that should do it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to move forward three inches to see if that gets me where I want to be. Compile, run it, close that, open it again, and that is exactly where I want to be. I'm facing the right way and I'm in the right point, so I can now repeat this whole process, which will do this hex here, which is the same as that hex there. Okay. So, we've got more code. We can start putting this stuff in a function. All this right here, why don't we call that 
draw two columns. Void, draw two columns. Now I'm going to delete lines 54 through 65. 54 through 65, I'll delete those and I will put them right there. So now I'm going to draw two columns. These lines should put me in the starting point for the next one. I'm going to get rid of this move forward by three inches. I'll just delete that and then I'll just try this again. Draw two columns, get to the next location, draw two columns. Let's see if it works. Compile, run, close, open, voila. Okay, now it's just a matter of how many times do I have to draw two columns? Uh, they're eight and a half inches, so let's assume, make a, an assumption that this is an inch, so I need to do that eight times. Uh, I immediately want to take advantage of a loop. So I'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than eight, plus plus i. And in there, I want to draw two columns and then move over to the next. Well, um, this one, I mean, since we're going function crazy, why don't we do this? Um, if, what did I call it? I said move up to next column. So this would be either back to start or move down to next column. All right. Either way. I mean, really, the, the naming of the functions needs to be uh, whatever makes sense for you. So I'm going to call it, just for consistency of my naming, I'm going to say move down to next column. Curly braces, that's line 74 through 77. Put it there. Draw two columns. Move down to next column. Compile, run, up. Close that, open. So what you end up with, and uh, well, that's what you end up with. Again, there are any number of ways. If you are uh, averse to drawing too many lines, you could easily, uh, once you got down to the bottom of this first row, you could just kind of transcribe the outer edges of some of these without, and without doing duplications. Uh, there are a million ways of doing it, right? Maybe you first draw Maybe the first thing you do is you draw um, like these two hexes, and then it's just a matter of repeating that algorithm over and over again, yeah, rather than going straight down. Well, anyway, you, you can do it. The point is, is, as it evolves, you find code that you're able to reuse, and you dump them into functions, which creates something nice and succinct in main. And um, there you go. So a uh, couple things I, I want to note is that, one, I put all of my functions above the location where I'm using them. Uh, you run into problems that will be talked about by Andreas where you need to des de describe the function prior to your use of the function. Also note that we're allowed to put functions inside of functions, right? So these two functions are functions that I wrote, and they're all... Well, all those are functions I wrote, and they're inside of this function. Um, but yeah, so any questions before I do the last 30 seconds of giving you the word of the day? <laughs> nope. Was that useful to see that? Yes. All right, good. Okay, so the, and this will be posted so that you can make hex paper for your kids or whatever. Uh, the word of the day is...
Revanchism. Revanchism. A policy of seeking to retaliate, especially to recover lost territory. <laughs> yeah, right. I, obviously not thematically apropos to the day, but... Um, Right, so in them, you can just say the first line number, comma, the second line number, and then D, and they'll delete into an unknown buffer. Now, if you accidentally delete something else and you lose that buffer, the easy way to get it back is just to hit U undo until your lines reappear and then start all over again. Well, is Cynic already do? Hmm? Cynic Yeah, yeah, these, these are old words. I'm starting to keep a file of all the words. How long do we have to uh, submit those? Generally, I don't think I, I made this explicit, but the way it's working now that the semester is humming is the deadline for submitting the word of the day is prior to the next lecture. So this is due, you have to put in the word prior to Monday's lecture. Okay, and that's so that people who decide not to attend, at least I'm making them watch the videos in a timely manner rather than waiting three weeks before they watch any of them. All right. So, uh, assuming I'm not here Monday and Tuesday, I will see you on Wednesday.